A Toronto woman is now facing a murder charge in the death of her four-month-old son. Police were called to an apartment building in the Roselawn and Marley Avenue area last Wednesday after the child was reported missing by his father. Officers found the infant with critical injuries. He was taken to hospital where he later died. Investigators have identified the child's mother as 30-year-old Carissa Edwards. She was initially charged with failing to provide the necessaries of life, but police say that charge was upgraded to second-degree murder after an autopsy was performed. For more on this case, we're joined by former Toronto homicide detective Mark Mendelson. Mark, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what a chilling development here. What do you make of the charges being upgraded to second-degree murder here, Mark? What does that tell you? Well, if we go back to the to the day that this occurrence took place and, and the police were notified, one of the common themes from the divisional detectives and from the police was that the homicide squad was monitoring the situation. And they always do when there is a sudden and unexplained death of a child. And that's the situation that we found ourselves in over the last few days. They did lay those initial charge, uh, charges of uh, failing to provide the necessaries of life, which mm -hmm. is wide encompassing in terms of what that may or may not be. But everything always hinges in, in, in sad cases like this as to the results of, uh, of an autopsy conducted by a specialized pediatric forensic pathologist. Um, and obviously, uh, the results of, of that, uh, that examination, um, you know, brought forth information that would lead to the cause and the mechanism of death. Um, you know, they, they would, at that point, they would be able to conduct, uh, you know, further examinations in terms of uh, injuries, whether there were some historical injuries, previous broken bones. And of course, Lena, we are speculating because we don't have all right. the information. But these are the things that come out in an autopsy. Broken bones, things of that nature that were never tended to, that were never seen by a, by a medical practitioner. Um, you know, the, there, there could be uh, starvation involved. There are all kinds of different yeah. scenarios that, that might take place. But the autopsy sort of gave the police, certainly gave the homicide squad reasonable grounds to believe that second degree murder was the appropriate charge as it relates to the cause and the mechanism mm -hmm. of death. Uh, it's not first degree, so there's no suggestion of planning or deliberate by the mother in this case. But, uh, you know, we're going to find out horrible details as, as we go down the road. But again, it's all, it's, you know, children just don't always die unexpectedly and without, without a reason. Uh, you know, there are circumstances, there are medical circumstances that create that situation. And it's the autopsies that are sort of the, the you know, the source of where the police are going to go, where that evidence is going to take them in terms of the investigating anything further. And in this case, certainly enough evidence came through at the autopsy yeah. to support a charge of murder. Yeah, you're so right about that, Mark. There's still so much we don't know. What we do know, though, is that a mother has been charged uh, with murder in connection with her baby's death. A lot of people might be wondering, and you kind of touched on this, but I'm wondering if you can elaborate. They might be wondering why second degree murder, not first degree. Well, first degree requires planning and deliberation. There may not be any evidence to support that in terms of the intent to kill. It may be, it may have started with, uh, you know, her being uh, neglectful as to the care of this child, and that continued on uh, to a point where it was impossible for her to to ignore what was taking place or what she was doing to the child. I've been involved in these before, and you know, you look at the child, and the child has done it, un, you know, died unexpectedly, and without any history, but when you get to the autopsy and you start to really looking at the situation from a medical point of view, you found old, we found old broken bones, um, what's often referred to as shaken baby syndrome, where there are injuries to the brain that you can't see externally, you can only see at the autopsy. So this is the evidence that they got from the forensic pathologist, and that gives them the grounds to lay that charge. And it's all very sad, it's very unfortunate, and uh, uh, you know we're just going to have to wait now for the, for the court process to play its way through and it's going to take some time obviously before we get any real concrete details of, as to what she did and didn't do with respect to caring for this child just a, a horrible horrible story uh, mark since the day we found out um, probably publication ban going to be in place that's right right mark 
Absolutely. That's a normal course, Lena. Nobody should read anything nefarious into that. Anytime there are there are cases like this that come before the courts, one of the first things that is done, either by, by request from the Crown or the defense, is that there is a publication ban. Mm. That only that only protects witnesses or future witnesses that may be interviewed so they don't get information that may compromise their thoughts, but also looking ahead to jury selection, where you don't want a tainted jury pool who are, you know, sort of coming up with preconceived notions based on what they've seen and what they've read in social media, in, in media and social media. All right. Uh, former Toronto homicide detective Mark Mendelson, uh, thanks so much for your insights. We so appreciate this. Again, what an awful story. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. My pleasure, Lena.